Per usual, everything on this channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. Let's talk about ETH today. Let's take a look at the supply locked first. Always a good barometer for what's going on in the market. I believe what I'm seeing here is potentially a top signal for ETH. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. Like I said in the last video, if you're wrong on ETH, the problem is that it moves so quickly, it takes no prisoners. If you're short, you're wrecked. If you're not in a position, you're wrecked. <laughs> so if we look at the ETH locked, ETH locked has actually dropped from 8.8 8 to about 6.8 over the past month. Now, if I was a betting man, which I am, I would suggest not continuing to long up here, but that's just me based on this. If you're bullish, you want to see this increasing. And yes, I know some of this is double or triple counted, whatever. I don't care. Now, if you look at the USD value, you're like, oh man, right? It's at 15 billion. Couldn't be more bullish. For me, I just care about uh, ETH locked because this represents a supply vacuum just getting sucked out of the for sale situation. You can't sell ETH if it's locked up, right? If you've If you have ETH locked, you're essentially in an ETH long. You're in a spot long, right? And you can hedge that on whatever DEX or lending thing you want. But at the end of the day, you still, you're still holding ETH. So that's currently on the decline and has been for the past few days. We'll say a week or more. So it's interesting that price continues to rise with this falling bit of a divergence there. Maybe some profit taking. I don't know. Now, if we look at balances on exchanges, another good barometer for basically what we're doing here is we're, we're whale watching. What are the whales doing? Are they locking their ETH up? Are they moving it to an exchange to sell? Are they buying it on Grayscale? I'll look at that one. I'll pull it up in a sec. But if we look at what happened in 1718, January, this is uh, 2017 to 2018, it became very clear on the supply demand curve what's going on here. Balances on exchanges went way down, price went way up, and when the reverse happened, price went way down, right? And if we look at current data, we see that, uh, that's not going to work, we see that we're down to 11.5 million ETH on exchanges compared to 2018, 2019. That's somewhere in the low range, you know, it's not like all-time lows, of around 6 million. That was kind of the peak for ETH. So we're currently about double that as far as exchange volume or exchange uh, balances. If you look at total ETH deposits, another supply suck vacuum, it's at it's over 300k, I'm pretty sure now, which is nothing in the grand scheme of things, but it's growing and that's what you want to see. You want to see the inflation of ETH over the past three years have a job other than being sold on an exchange. You want to see it getting sucked into something, okay? Because at that point, when there's nothing for sale, like there is for BTC, there's really nothing for sale, price will go up, so long as the buying continues, which it clearly has been. If we look at Grayscale, another whale wallet, right? What, who's buying? Don't care, but they're buying. It's the second highest single asset trust they have at 1.2, 1.3 billion by now. And if we multiply the Number of shares times ETH per share, I get nearly 2.6 million ETH. So that's a lot of ETH. That's no small amount of ETH. Again, any supply suck is good, kind of regardless of the quality. You know, if it's in grayscale, it's not exactly truly crypto. It's just sort of an institutional c custodian. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It's all bullish. People are buying and supply is going somewhere. Really, at the end of the day, that's all that matters for the fundamental side of things, at least for me. If we look at technicals, oh man. So since the bullish TK recross above the cloud, the single most powerful signal in the cloud system. The opposite is also true. A bearish TK recross below the cloud. Why is this, why is this the most powerful signal? Because it represents bullish or bearish continuation, in this case, bullish continuation. It says price had a previous bullish rally, reconsolidated, 
made a second decision and said, you know what, we want more, and boom, plus 50% since bullish TK recrossed above the cloud, no different than BTC. BTC might be up 60 or 70% since the bullish TK recross above the cloud, but nevertheless, an extremely bullish signal that should always be paid attention to. You just can't be short on that signal. You cannot be short. It is historically insanely accurate. 80 to 90% of the time has represented bullish continuation. Not only that, that we see, we see so few of these that it's hard not to pay attention to them. They're so rare, especially for ETH. This is only the fourth, fourth one ever, if I can speak without mumbling. If we look at the weekly ETH cloud, this is the ELX, not available publicly, at least the full history. But if we look at the ELX, it is currently making its way through the predicted 750-ish target as far as this edge-to-edge -edge move to the top of the cloud. And anybody can look at this. I'm not saying I predicted this. I'm just saying, look, here's the cloud. Watch some videos from months ago. See what I was talking about. Okay, use the cloud. It's it's great. I promise you. It's free. It's available almost anywhere you can trade candlesticks. It's amazing. Okay, use these settings. 2061, 2030. Here was your entry. Here's your exit. What more do you want in life, right? So the target is still about 750. I don't know how much more we'll get. I feel uncomfortable longing up here. I felt uncomfortable longing at 450. So I'm going to feel even less comfortable longing up here. Again, you're getting a bearish divergence beginning on high, high time frames. The low time frames, you're definitely, definitely going to see a bearish divergence here. Another thing to mention about this weekly cloud is you're getting a mega bullish confirmation on future cloud as far as what is the expectation into 2021. The expectation into 2021 is incredibly bullish. This is just trend reversal, all of this. Like, if you're bullish now, wait till you see what's happening in 2021 when we are bullish on the weekly cloud. Last time ETH was bullish on the weekly cloud, it moved like whatever thousands of percent, right? I don't think that's going to happen again, but it's definitely going to be more bullish than bearish. Longs will make more money than shorts. I think we're going to see plenty of opportunities for dip buying into 2021, key June bounces, that sort of thing. But overall, the trend should be mega bullish in 2021. If we try to, the next question I get obviously is like, targets, targets, sir. Where are your targets? What's the next move? So I already, I already mentioned 750. That's just like the baseline target since 2020. I don't know. Whatever, whenever the clouds started forming, this was the target. And essentially it's just the 50, 50% 50 retrace from high to low here to here. So that's like the target of all targets, right? What, how else can we skin this cat? If we look at the two year MA multiplier, which is a deceptive name because I've adjusted it slightly, but I'll talk about that. All right. So this is, this is the MA, the moving average. And this is either the red line is 5X or 3X that MA. And you have to curve fit this a little bit depending on the coin, depending on the, the um, amount of chart history. Obviously we can't, we can't really look at two year MAs effectively on ETH because the ETH hasn't existed that long, right? So if we adjust this for various settings and try to curve fit this and try to see like what was, what were the highs previously? That's basically what I'm looking at. Does it capture the lows? Does it capture the highs? This is the 365 MA on the 12 hour, which is actually the whatever on the daily. You know, if we're trying to curve fit this and this is 3X versus 5X, as far as the MA multiplier is concerned, you just have to decide for yourself which, which of these looks the best. You know, I kind of think maybe this one and this one look the best. You know, they don't, you want something that captures the highs, but isn't like overbought for months. You know, this, this is the kind of stuff I like to see where it's like, boop, just a little bit. So that's predicting a high of around 1250 probably, which is near all time highs at least. If we look at this, this is the 365, so half year MA times three. We can just eyeball that and see that. Again, it doesn't perfectly capture the lows. It captured these lows really nicely. Captured these highs relatively nicely. You know, that's predicting around 850 as far as a high. We're above the median line here. Haven't been above the median or midline since, you know, 2017. Okay. Definitely 
a bullish time for ETH. Not that you need me to tell you that. But I think this, this or this probably look the best. Sorry, this or this. This is 3x, maybe it's like the 182 MA or something. I don't know. But they both look good, right? They both say we're not quite at the highs, but we're getting close as far as predicted. Like ultimate cycle highs. You know, and this can range up here for months, right? Like it's not, it's like RSI. RSI can be overbought. It can say be careful, but it can just stay overbought, stay oversold for a long period of time. So that's what I'm kind of looking at for ETH as far as targets. Like ultimate, ultimate targets beyond here. Maybe we get a pullback to 430 or something. I don't know. And um, the cycle high would be 850. You know, that'll keep going up over the next few few months, obviously. Another thing that might happen is it can range in between the median line and uh, the high here, the MA multiplier. Although that typically doesn't happen. Typically it does reach the red line and then that's it. You know, it doesn't really, doesn't really bounce back from there. At least ETH hasn't. I don't know. This is tough because none of these are perfect and it's hard to like curve fit this enough to say I'm confident one way or the other. But if it reaches the red line, breaches the red line, and then breaks below the red line, that's for sure a this is done over signal. That's it. You know, that historically across anything that I've looked at for this type of multiplier, that's been the case. All right. Another thing we can look at for targets is the pitchfork, something that I'm trying to get spotlight on for years because it's so great at showing you possibilities of targets, right? The same thing with yearly pivots. Yearly pivots print January 1st. They don't change throughout the year. We're currently above the R3, reaching for the R4. We're currently in one of the outer rings of the pitchfork diag. You can see there's plenty of room for upside, though. Plenty of room. Over time here, this can get crazy, right? And uh, VPVR shows there's no, there's been no real volume up here historically relative to the volume below us. Path of least resistance is up. Support at around 480, kind of this previous consolidation, previous high area. So pullbacks would be around the R2, around 480 as well. So plenty of confluence for 480-ish on any pullbacks. Upside's tough for me just because look, look how much we're up over the past couple days. Like it's been insane, right? Like look at these daily candles. Look at this. Look at this. Insane. It's it's again with ETH, you're either you're either mega right or mega wrong extremely quickly. So for a lot of people, that's a great tradable asset because they don't have to wait six months, 18 months to figure out if they're in profit. If we look at the alligator and fractals, the fractal MA is around 440, which would be your trailing stop loss over the next couple of days. Similar to what would happened in uh, August. You can see how we just like rode those MAs to the upside and then eventually found consolidation. So we will print more fractal stops. Um, if, if you're expecting, if I'm expecting a similar setup, uh, you can see we got these stop losses higher and higher and higher. And then right here is where you got out. So that was a pretty good capture of that trend at the time. And it saved you all this gobbledygook grease mess, getting your hands dirty. And then, okay, we're back in it here. And the stops kept moving up. And you get stopped out on a candle close, not a wick. So this wasn't actually a stop. And boom, 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 here we are. So what I'm looking for here is more fractals, more stop losses higher, more trailing stop losses higher. Because you really don't want to lose all of this uh, profit, obviously, with a stop at 440. It's a bit low. Even if we go to the 12 hour, a stop loss is still at like 460. That's just how insane this up move has been over the past few days. Then again, if we look at lastly, just a few more targets as far as are we there yet sort of situation. If we fib the 2019 high with the 2018 low, we are currently above the 1.618 and above the 2x multiple of that. If we look at this high and this low in earlier this year, we're currently within that range as well. So I think we're getting close. I think we're getting close. I don't think you can short this. I really can't. Something else you can talk about is there's a uh, rising wedge. I don't know if I have a chart for that, but there's a rising wedge on lower time frames here with the bearish divergence. We're getting close, folks. We have to be getting close. There's no way this is sustainable. 
you know, if this 2x is from here, I'm, I'm just going to close down the YouTube channel. You, you heard it here. If this goes to 1200 before it pulls back, I'm just, I'm done making videos. That's all I have for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, hit me up on Twitter, and happy trading.